It appears that White House emails are the latest target to be hacked. According to today's New York Times, hackers believed to be linked with the Russian government didn't get a hold of classified information, but they were able to gain access to some of President Obama's email correspondence. It's yet another cyber attack that has many on edge. Our cover story this morning is reported by David Pogue of Yahoo Tech. Sometimes you can have regional... In Huntsville, Alabama, they're training the next generation of cyber warriors. Here, high school students can take cybersecurity the way other kids might take geometry or English, and they have no problem being called nerds. I am definitely a nerd. Yeah, all of us would definitely be classified as, as nerds. nerds. Yeah. I think nerds tend to have jobs. <laughs> She's not kidding. These kids already have after-school jobs, and it's not flipping burgers. Some of us work at a local engineering firm, and we're developing an experimental form of malware detection. And sometimes they forget we're in high school. Yeah. <laughs> like they're calling us at like 1.30, and it's like uh -huh. I'm in the middle of my fifth period. <laughs> Just listening to these kids talk, it's easy to forget that they're still only in high cyber school. Warfare. Cyber warfare is really attractive to other countries because it's affordable and allows them to strike at other countries and whatever political interests they don't like with relative impunity and cause damage without having it traced back to them. It's really easy to attack, but it's very difficult to defend. All the experts agree. America needs a lot more kids like the ones in Huntsville. Hacker attacks aren't just occasional headlines anymore. They've become routine. The Secret Service is investigating one of the largest thefts of credit card and debit card information ever. Reports say hackers may have stolen up to 80 million records. So suppose I pick 100 American companies at random. Sure. How many of the 100 could you get into? Nearly all of them. And it's not just me. I don't Frank Height is the co-founder of Leviathan, a security company in Seattle. He employs hackers, but Leviathan's hackers are the good guys. Companies hire them to help secure their computer networks. A few years ago, Height's team figured out a way to break into the computers of a huge oil and gas company, not to do damage, just to show that it could be done. They started with a Google search, where they found a press release from one of the company's subcontractors. They published a press release because they were very proud to supply all this excellent equipment to this very, very large project for this truly amazingly big company. <laughs> the subcontractor had sold networking gear to the oil company. Height's team found the user manual for that equipment, and in that manual, they found the factory setting for its owner name and password. Actually had, yeah, admin, admin. It's the most famous username and password. But you're supposed to change that you once you buy the equipment, right? Exactly correct. But the oil company hadn't changed that password and Height could have taken control of its phone and data systems. So what you're saying is if I wanted to target this enormous gas company... You're done right there. Wow. And um, how big a team and how long was involved in unearthing <laughs> this? This is a, a single intern, one engineer, and one week of effort. <laughs> uh, what we're seeing increasingly is a range of breaches credit card theft, uh, theft of trade secrets, economic espionage. Lisa Monaco is President Obama's top homeland security and counterterrorism advisor. She meets with him every morning. And increasingly, those meetings are featuring uh, discussions about cyber threats, discussions about breaches to uh, companies around the country, uh, breaches to our own uh, federal networks. And she says that last November's attack on Sony Pictures was especially troubling. The hackers took control of Sony's computers, deleted millions of files, and made public social security numbers, salaries, and embarrassing emails. And the fallout continues. Just this past week, one of those emails revealed something about Ben Affleck that he didn't want public. He had asked the producers of the PBS program Finding Your Roots, not to mention that his ancestor had been a slave owner. Back in January, in his State of the Union address, President Obama had this call to action. No foreign nation, no hacker, should be able to shut down our networks, steal our trade secrets, or invade the privacy of American families. Which is why this month, the President signed a new executive order. It lets the Treasury Secretary freeze the assets of hackers outside the United States who disrupt networks or steal trade secrets. And to better coordinate the government's response to attacks, He's creating a new office in the White House. 
the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center. It will be one center, one place in the government that synthesizes this information, analyzes it, understands who are the range of threat actors that we face, and very, very importantly, have a place that can uh, identify that information that can be shared with the private sector. Lisa Monaco will oversee the new effort. Pretend I'm a non-technical American, mm -hmm. and all I know is movies where bad guys remotely take con control of traffic lights and dams and nuclear power plants. Is that realistic? The danger or the risk of a catastrophic cyber attack, of the, of the type that you just described, uh, is fairly remote. Nevertheless, I think it's very important to remember that we are a increasingly interconnected world. And that means we are increasingly vulnerable. Here we have a hospital with hospital records. We have our bank here, which has uh, online banking records. The White House isn't the only outfit preparing for more cyber attacks. This is Cyber City. Ed Scotus built it for the Sands Institute, a cybersecurity training firm. It may look like something out of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, but Scotus says it's one of the military's premier cyber war simulators. Everything under the table is the actual same equipment that is used to control a power grid or a water reservoir or, or the other kinds of equipment we have. So when, when people are learning to, to hack, Yes. Uh, they're interacting with the actual commercial computer systems that control real-world power grids, dams. Exactly. At this facility, cyber warriors practice defending real-world networks from hacker attacks. Seated at remote computers, they're challenged with stopping pretend hackers from causing a blackout, poisoning the reservoir, or even derailing the train. Cybersecurity is in, in our medical systems. It is in the military. It is in government. It controls our air traffic control systems. And if we don't get this right, we lose. We lose our place as a dominant economy in the world. Retired Brigadier General Bernie Scotch runs the Air Force Association's National Cyber Patriot Competition. In this tournament, young teams from all over the country compete to see who can best defend their computer networks against attacks from security pros. This is an area of the economy that has negative unemployment. We can't hire enough of these people, and it's because cybersecurity transcends everything that we do. Which brings us back to those kids from Alabama. Grissom High School. A team from Huntsville won first place in the Cyber Defense Nationals. That's an encouraging sign, but experts say we're going to need a lot more like them. Are we outgunned? Are there enough security people to handle the hackers who are trying to fight them? No. No, and there won't be for quite a while. According to security expert no, Frank Height, preparing for the new era of cyber war is a job that may never end. Will it be an arms race forever? My intuition is to say yes. So what's the reality of these headlines? Is it really terrifying or is it just business? It's terrifyingly normal business. But unfortunately, this is a problem that takes years to address. And uh, we're only now beginning to address it.